Low Science family, we just wanted to go through some quick review on potential and kinetic energy problems. We know that potential energy is equal to mass times gravity times the height. And remember that gravity really is on planet Earth. We go with 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration of gravity. We also know kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So it's one half times the object's mass times its velocity squared. So those are our equations. Let's plug in to get kind of the vibe on how to actually do these problems. So we wanna find the kinetic energy, right? It says so, so that's what we're looking for. We've got a thousand kilogram roller coaster, so that's gonna be my mass. And the car is moving at a speed of 20 meters per second. So that speed is going to be what we call our velocity. We're gonna find out later in the class that speed and velocity are slightly different, but for now this will be a good way to be able to do the problems. So if I use my guess method, my given, what am I given? First of all, I'm given my mass. I've got 1,000 kilograms for the mass of my roller coaster cart. And then also, I have my velocity, meaning how fast that object's moving, is 20 meters per second. So that's going to be my velocity. I also know for you, my unknown, the problem is asking for kinetic energy. So that's the big question, how much kinetic energy? The E for equation means that I'm going to use what equation? My kinetic energy equation that we have written up here, which is one half times the mass times the velocity squared. All right, so let's plug that in to get our information. So the next S is substitute. So KE is my kinetic energy. That's what I'm gonna solve for. I'm gonna do one half times its mass, which is 1,000 times its velocity squared, which is 20 for the velocity squared, right? I just plugged in for each of my variables, right? I didn't know my kinetic energy yet, but I did know my mass and I did know my velocity. Mass is right here, velocity is right there. And that's how I ended up with that one. All right, so what is kinetic energy when I hammer this out? Well, 1,000 times 1 half, that's going to be 500 or one half times a thousand. And then 20 squared is going to be 400. So 500 times 400 ends up getting us an answer of about 200,000. Now the question is, what are my units? Well, anything for energy or work is in joules. So we'll say 200,000 joules of energy for kinetic energy. All right, perfect. Let's move on to number 16. 16 says, if the roller coaster car in the problem above was moving at double the speed. So originally it was 20 meters per second. So if we double that, it's going to be 40 meters per second. What would be its new kinetic energy? All right, perfect. Well, we've got everything the same setup as the last problem, except we've got a slightly new velocity. So let me write down the equation for kinetic energy. And now... Let's plug in for mass. Mass is still 1,000, but since the question said, what if we double the speed? 20 is now 40. So it's going to be 40 squared equals KE. Maybe that double velocity goes right there, right? That's where the 40 came from. All right, let's uh, finish this up. 1 half times 1,000 is 500, and 40 times 40 squared is going to be 1600 and then when you multiply those together 500 times 1600 is going to end up being about 800,000 joules so if you take a look notice the kinetic energy didn't end up doubling even though the speed doubled the kinetic energy went up exponentially and that's because the velocity is squared so think about that when you look at your answer to make sure just because you double the speed doesn't mean you double the kinetic energy. All right. If we skip to number 18, you'll see that it says if the mass of a loaded cart is three kilograms, that is our mass given to us. And it's on a small hill. So if it's on a hill, that means it's off the ground. So that's going to be my H for height. What is its potential energy? So I think that's what we're looking for is potential energy. All right, we know that since this cart is above the ground, it has stored up energy that if you let go, it might roll down a hill or fall, and that would convert into other energies like kinetic energy. 
So potential energy is just stored up energy. But what's given to us is simple. We've got three kilograms and for height, we have about 0.45 meters. So this isn't a super heavy little cart and it isn't that high off the ground. It's almost about, it's 45 centimeters off the ground, right? So the unknown, what we're looking for is potential energy. And we know the equation for potential energy is mass times gravity's acceleration, which on planet Earth is 9.8 times height. So since we do that, we already have mass and height, so we can solve our problem for potential energy. So we'll do S in the guess method for substitute. We have our PE potential energy for our mass. We're going to have three kilograms. For our acceleration of gravity, we're going to have 9.8. And for our height, we're going to have 0.45. I should have put 0 0.45. But if you multiply all three of those together, you end up getting a number that isn't that large compared to all that kinetic energy. But remember, this wasn't that heavy of an object. It was only three kilograms. But you end up getting about 13.23 joules of potential stored up energy. And again, since it's not that high off the ground and it's really not that heavy, three kilograms, uh, it makes sense that it really doesn't have that much stored up energy. But let's look at the next one, something a little heavier. You've got a 75 kilogram refrigerator. So that's got a little bit more mass to it. This thing is 300 meters above the ground, okay? So it's in a big, tall building, a skyscraper. So 300 meters, that's a height. We wanna know what its potential energy is. So that's what we're looking for. What is the potential energy? Fine, let's do our guess method. I'm given the mass, 75 kilograms. I'm given my height. 300 meters above the ground. My unknown, the thing I wanna solve for is my potential energy. That's what I don't have. From the last problem, we know our equation for potential energy. It's mass times gravity's acceleration, which is 9.8 on planet Earth, for most parts of planet Earth. The further away you get, the weaker gravity gets, but it's super small, so we'll just leave it at 3.8. And then the height above the ground is going to be H. Now that we have that, because we have mass and height, we can plug in for mass and height in order to solve for potential energy. So S is for substitute. Let's plug in our numbers. 75 for mass, 9.8 for gravity, and 300 meters for the height. All you have to do is multiply all three of those together for our S solve. And what do we end up getting? A much bigger number. 220,500 joules of energy, right? If that, ele not elevator, refrigerator fell off the, the floor of the skyscraper, there'd be a lot of energy as it plunges to the ground, right? So this is a lot of potential energy stored up that if it fell out of the building, it could do a lot of damage and transfer that energy into something super dangerous. All right, but those were two problems of kinetic and two problems of potential energy. It's all about plugging in, but please understand kinetic energy is the energy of motion. You have to be moving to have kinetic energy, so you need a velocity. And then potential energy is energy that is stored up. The type of potential energy we are actually calculating is potential energy from gravity. But please know there's other ways to store up energy inside chemical bonds, inside the nucleus before a nuclear reaction happens uh, inside a battery, uh, a spring being pulled that has a lot of uh, tense force that wants to pull back. Um, that also has stored up energy, but the one we're focusing on is how high off the ground we are, and that is caused from gravity. So a good intro, but hopefully this helped you get started with your math problems if you were struggling. Take care, science fan.